Good morning, everybody. It's Keith Couch with Rocky Mountain Peterbilts here on YouTube. Uh, Rush Truck Center is out of Greeley, Colorado. Just thought I'd give a little introduction here. It is O Dark 30, and we're headed up to the Eisenhower Tunnel, uh, Silverthorn, Keystone, Dillon area of Colorado. It's about a couple hour drive for me, and uh, we're meeting the Eaton. Eaton Transmission Engineers up there, the new Endurant XD Pro, the new 18-speed automatic. I know, it's going to get a lot of you guys. Ah, oh, that's not right, but it's the future, and it's what's coming. Um, so, with that, I just thought I'd give you a quick introduction. We're going to do some pulls, um, at least one pull. It's probably all I'll get on video uh, from uh, Silverthorne to the Eisenhower Tunnel and back. So, uh... With that, I uh, just thought I'd give you a quick introduction. You can run in here, grab some coffee, and uh, head up the hill up to uh, Eisenhower Tunnel. So, looking forward to uh, talking to some engineers on a new 18-speed automatic. So, technically it's an 18-speed automated because it does have a clutch. So, don't hold that against me, you guys. I know there's a lot of you throwing rocks right now. So, just uh, enjoy the video. Thank you. See ya. Hey everybody, it's Keith Couch uh, here with Rocky Mountain Peterbilts, Rush Truck Center out of Greeley, Colorado. We are up in beautiful Keystone in Dillon, Colorado. Dillon Reservoir is right down there. Arapahoe Basin is just up the valley there. Uh, with the Eaton guys, uh, we have the Eaton Endurant XD Pro 18 speed automated transmission, technically speaking. Got a new Pete here, extended hood, flat top. Uh, it's a 565 horse, 1850 torque with 342 gears. And it has the 18 speed automated in it. And we are grossing, total gross right now is 79,000 pounds total. So I'm with Eric and Corey, <clears throat> and we're going to take this out on the road and kind of see how it does. So I just thought I'd share that with you. So I normally don't do little introductions or anything and I don't edit my stuff, but I, I'm going to have to splice together a couple videos here. So I'm not the best technical guy, but we will get it figured out. So with that, um, enjoy the video. Thanks guys. Okay. We're headed out of Silverthorn, and it east up I-70, up towards Eisenhower Tunnel. I'm here with Corey and Eric, Eaton Transmissions, and uh, take a peek at what we got going on here on the dash. Here we're in. This is a 565 1850 torque. Sorry if it's a little bumpy, it's the Colorado Road. So what are some of the, so what calibration is in this transmission right now? Yep, so right now uh, we're in our primary performance goal, which is set to performance. Um, so this is the maximum performance shift cal um, that you can get. Uh, it's designed for on-highway runs. Really nice for mountain, mountainous terrain, uh, hard, big hard poles like this. Um, keeps the engine up in its peak horsepower band. Uh, so for this engine from 1500 all the way up to 2000 RPM, we get full horsepower. And um, just sits it right there and, and climbs about as, as fast as he can. Um, the secondary performance goal on this truck. So if we um, if we change to what a lot of guys refer to as C2, um, you hold this upshift request for four seconds, it will change to standard mode. That's how we have this truck set up today. Um, and that is another on highway cow. It's a little less performance based, kind of in the middle of full economy and 
and max performance. Um, and that'll kind of keep the engine a little bit lower in the revs uh, and uh, climb a little slower, but still get the job done real nicely. Feels like it's going to shift. Yeah, it's about to shift. We're losing a little speed as the grade increases. Um, so we should be getting a shift here probably uh, when we get down to about 1,400 RPM. there on the attack that is your peak torque yep yeah that's where they want that's where cummins likes to run this engine that's where you're going to get your most most torque and uh full horsepower so we're right right there right now so this transmission uh knows it calculates how much we weigh it knows the slope of the grade that we're on and then uh makes gear, gear decisions based on that. So if it sees the, this grade um, increase, like, like it just did, um, it will raise its downshift points and, and make it shift a little bit sooner. Got a real dirty windshield today. So the engine knows the altitude. Yep. It tells the transmission, shares that information. Yep. Yeah, the engine's constantly talking with the transmission. It tells it how much power uh, it can produce. Um, uh, so, it, like when we're at sea level, it can produce more power because the air density is greater. As you come up in the mountains like this, um, the available oxygen in the air is less, so it can produce less power. Um, so, it tells the transmission that, and then the transmission can make uh, better gear selection decisions based on the fact that it knows that the engine has less power when we're up in the hills like this. I remember a Monday night football game, one of the announcers said that hunters love Denver because there's less gravity. <laughs> I like, nah, I don't think, I don't think so. <laughs> I think that's a constant. <laughs> it's probably dating myself. That was a while back. <laughs> We have Eric back here in the sleeper monitoring. What are you monitoring? I'm just looking at the, you know, how the transmission itself is operating. Looking at the friction points, static speed, and the shift speed. I'm going to see how some of the as we shift the different uh, rails inside the transmission and the clutch control. And then we get the need to get big H leaks based on the we find around here on the road. So Eric's also my boss. He's making sure that I'm doing my job correctly. Uh, Which is our heaviest month for snowfall up here. So, yeah. Hopefully, we'll get a little more. I definitely use it. Or wait a day or two until we leave, though. Yeah. Yeah. Just let us get out tomorrow morning. Yeah. So, 80,000. 79,000 pounds. 
down at about 35 miles an hour. But is this about 6% grade here? Air can tell you it's 7% seven, seven grade, 7.5. We're running in 13th gear. It's 1600 RPM just fine. Yeah, this truck has uh, 342 gears and low pro 24 five tires. So she's moving up the hill pretty so, good. Low pro 24 five, it's the same rolling diameter as an 11 R 22 five, correct? Exactly. Now, if you had 336 gears, Nice thing about an 18 speed, it would just compensate instead of running in 13th, it might be 12, 12, 12 yep. or 11. Yeah, that's really the beauty of the 18 speed is the steps are so small uh, that it's always going to just keep you right in that right. power range or that power band where on a, like an 10 speed or even our 12 speed, the steps are significantly larger. So you're going on either side of that power band. Uh, I still get guys calling one. 355s or 373s, and unless they're hauling super heavy, right? You don't need it. You got to think of your components. Yeah. Well, and, and then you save your mission make up thing. Yeah, and then you save your when you do run across Nebraska right. at 75, 80 miles an hour, then you're not spinning 1700 RPM. That's That's fuel. Fuel. Yeah. Yeah, we have trucks on the trip that have any all the way down to a, a two fifteen rear end with a with our twelve speed or our, sorry that one has an eleven speed, um, and uh, it climbs the hill just as fast or a little bit slower than this truck. This truck is well powered, and you can get this tranny with a twenty fifty torque as well, correct? Yeah, that's what we've been testing most of this trip with uh, yesterday or maybe the day before. We swapped to an 1850 rating to get a little bit more shifting and make sure that it handles that that uh, a little bit less available torque. So we had to slow down for this swift truck. Came off the throttle, uh, made a shift from a, from 13 down to 12. Our van just kicked in, took about 80 horsepower away from us. 80 horsepower? Yeah. Thanks that much? Yeah. This is a smaller fan too. Some of the big ones go over 100. Wow. I didn't realize they pulled that. Yeah. It's a lot of air. Yeah, luckily with this, the big cooling package on this truck, it doesn't have to stay in for very long. We're about 18, 1850 RPM, 33 miles that we're picking up speed. Yeah. 32 and then we're 33. So if I wanted to right now, if it's kind of hanging out here and I think it can go one more gear, I can request an upshift, it'll give it to me. So when you request that upshift, you don't have to change the manual or anything. Nope. You can just go. Nope. Okay. I didn't know that. It might still deny the shift if it if it really thinks it can't do it. Okay. Um, but when I when I request an upshift like that, we open up our tolerance window in the transmission software at that point, and then um, we're a little bit more conservative in drive mode. So we were hanging out there, right up at 1850 RPM. But if the driver says, "I know it can pull it," they can ask for that shift, and we open up that that margin. 
and um, and uh, usually give it to the driver. So when you request an upshift, you just just let them stop. Yep. This guy's coming over. Uh, Small no entries. Yep. Their car up there. Someone's having a bad day. He didn't fall off either. He's moving over. Oh, there he goes. I see him. Didn't see him in the smoke. Yeah. Smell that sweet smell of antifreeze. It's not a good day. It's like the old four liter Jeep gave up. Yeah. Okay, so coming into the Eisenhower tunnel here. Now we hit a down point. Yep. Back off this truck and try and keep a clean windshield. <laughs> Going through the Eisenhower Tunnel now. Shift it up to 14th gear. Fifteen. Yeah, this is about probably 30 or 40 percent pedal. Just nice and easy on it. Yeah, so we're coming down into Georgetown here, probably minus six, minus seven percent grade. Um, truck speed is 45 miles an hour, and uh, we're able to hold that really well in this truck with the with the Cummins brake that it has. Um, if we want to increase speed a little bit, we can put it down into level one. You see the speed roll out. If we want to hold speed, uh, level two is kind of where this one likes to sit. And if we want to decrease speed, we see someone coming up to get her to level three and it'll start slowing her right now. Um, so yeah, uh, haven't touched the brakes since we left the tunnel. Um, and this thing is just, just cruising down without much effort at all. Green engine at the top right there, that tells you different levels of your jig. As we get to the bottom here, we'll let it roll out. Level one. And if I want to go up a gear, again, I just pull that, get the brake back on, and let it roll right out. Usually we got a state cup at the bottom here. So you can select the gear. You don't have to be in manual. Right. Request it. So there's the end of truck speed. And we can get back right up to 65. So we've come all the way from the Eisenhower Tunnel down to Georgetown. Without touching the brakes. That's correct. And we're grossing 79,000 pounds. Yep. Okay, we're going over Perthen Pass now. Yeah, so these passes get pretty interesting. Um, they're obviously hard poles, but um, as you come into them, they get pretty curvy. Um, these ones aren't bad, but we'll be coming up on a 20 mile an hour switchback here. So this is where the 18 speed really shines. And uh, we'll get slowed down for the for that 20, 20 mile an hour switchback. 
um, it'll go one or two one or two gears down as I lift off the pedal um, and then as we come through it we'll roll back into the throttle and it'll it'll upshift out of that no problem there's a key in the ditch so we'll get down to that this is a 15 mile an hour switch back just real light real light on the throttle as we exit we can accelerate she'll start up shifting it's got no problem up shifting this is fairly steep what, what is the grade here about six six and a half percent grade six and a half percent grade so we got another one here Hopefully no one tries to come up and get close to us. Down to 11, 9. So it skipped from 11 down to 9. Yep, and I'm real light, real light on the throttle there. Try to keep our trailer out of the ditch. And right back to full throttle. So it did a 9 to 11 there and then pulled right out of it. That's amazing when it skips you <laughs> in a 6% grade. That's a good ship. Holy love. So truck speed's 35, and we'll, we'll be able to pull 35 the whole way up. So this is the real interesting stuff for the transmission. Pulling Eisenhower um, is good, but once you get to the, to the right gear, it kind of just sits there. Uh, this stuff, we got to upshift and downshift uh, as we go through these switchbacks. Um, so it's more interesting for us as, as uh, performance engineers to make sure the transmission is going to behave and do, do, what they need, or do what it needs to do. This is pulling about 70%, 80% pedal. <clears throat> so the performance cow is set up to like I said before, set the engine right at peak horsepower pretty much the whole time. So um, as you roll in and out of the throttle, uh, you're, you always have that power available. And it's it's really nice for hills like this, uh, where if we were to upshift here and, and come in at 1,200 RPM, we had even a little bit of great inflection, we'd have to downshift and you just feel like you're shifting back and forth. So this cal is designed to just keep engine speed Right at peak horsepower.
And right there, that's the engine and transmission talking to each other. Even though we're low in engine speed, the, the transmission knows that the engine has enough torque to pull. You know, we got a bad connection. So the engine, or the transmission knows the engine has enough torque to pull. So it allows it to come down in, in engine speed and not have to shift back and forth a bunch. Uh, and you can come off your pedal, um, slow the truck down, and then just roll right back into it, not even have to shift. to do my descent is just to get my engine speed up and then I can use my engine brake to modulate as I come down so we're still on level one braking <coughs> engine speeds about 1500 if I want to speed up a little I just turn the brake off let it roll out turn it back on Get my brakes. We're gonna have a slow descent. A little bit of snow on the road today. So we got some cars slowing way down. I know the transmission's going to shift in these downhill grades at slow speeds like this. I usually apply my service brake so we don't start accelerating through the shift, and you just keep keep control of the vehicle a little bit better. Because this is still an AMT, it runs just like a manual, has a clutch, it doesn't power shift, so 
when we go to shift, the drive line opens up, and uh, there's there's no torque to the wheels. Okay, so we're stopped here on Berthoud Pass. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. It's not going to let me zoom in, but we got snow blowing operations going on up there. Got a snow plow truck blocked us up here. So we're on about a 4.5% grade. And we were talking about urge to move with the 18 speed automated transmission. So Eric was going to show us here kind of how that works. We've got the brakes released. Yep. So uh, going into drive, transmission picks the appropriate start gear for the hill we're on. Uh, the driver has the option to button down all the way to first if he wants, and come back up to third. Um, and then uh, on a grade like this, HSA will be active. So HSA is hill start aid. So that means when we release our foot off the brake, um, the clutch will begin to close and the brakes are being held in the background until we have enough clutch torque to move the vehicle ahead without rolling backwards. So we got a car right on our bumper right now. So if we roll backwards, it's gonna be a bad day. Um, so like I said, it picks third gear. All you do is take your foot off the brake. You can feel the clutch torque build, hear the brakes release, and then we just move forward until I get my foot back on the brake to stop the truck. Can't go too far. Can't go too far. Yeah. So that's kind of how the urge to move with the hill start aid works. Yep. Very slick, very nice, keeps you from rolling backwards. Yep. Okay, so we've made it. We're going west on I-70 out of the Eisenhower Tunnel and almost down to Silverthorne and have not touched the brakes. This has been uh, 12, 13 here. Yep. Truck speed's about 35, or it is 35. Um, we've been running right there, not going back and forth between uh, level one and level two on the engine brake. Uh, and this thing is having no problem getting us down the hill without without using the service brakes. And the training's not getting hot. No issues, no breakfast is not hot out either. Was talking about coolers and whether you needed one or not. This truck does not have a cooler. Yeah, we're doing some uh, some temperature validation testing out here, um, making sure that all of our temperatures stay in line with where we want them to be. Uh, so this cooler, this truck has a, a cooler actually physically on the truck, but we have it disconnected right now for this temperature study. Our truck speed ends, so no more 35. We can let her roll out. And I'm not, I'm not even going to get on the accelerator. You just click up a couple gears and it rolls right out. And you can ask for those gears while you're in automatic. 
Yep. Yeah, exactly. Mode. You don't have to go to manual mode. So as we come into town and we're getting ready to get off in Silver Garden, we'll get the brakes back on. Then as we come up on our off ramp, we're going to show you how max mode works. So with this stock, uh, we have a max mode detent. So in the bottom of our engine brake setting, we have a detent. You pull it to max and you see max in your, in your engine brake. And that gives you uh, even higher downshift points for the retarder. So this mode is really nice for getting off the expressway. You can see it makes downshifts about 16, 1700 RPM and comes back in 2100 RPM and gets all 650 braking horsepower out of this engine. But we're still going downhill and uh, this brake yeah, it is slow, slow as back down. This is steep. And we're loaded out at 79,000 pounds total. And shifted down to 14. See, we're coming down. So if we think we're slowing down a little too fast, just put her back in one. And then as we come up on that uh, the off ramp here, coming up to this off ramp, we'll switch it back into max mode and get us slowed way down as we come into town. Ready to get off at Silver Tar. Then, right before the hill here, put her back in max mode. That's amazing how well it slows it down. So you still haven't touched the service brakes. So all the way from Eisenhower Tunnel without touching the brakes. That's amazing. So that was the abridged version of Eisenhower Tunnel all the way down without touching the brakes. So Eric was just telling me about a fleet. Uh, we're, we're talking about guys, owner operators, that a lot of you guys think that if, if you have to have an automated or an automatic, you shouldn't be driving. That's not necessarily true. Eric had a, a story about a fleet that came in. Yeah, so we had a, a fleet came into our proving, ground, proving grounds in Marshall, Michigan. We have a 15% grade. And the fleet came in, they drove one of our trucks, loaded 140,000 pounds, um, pulling the, you know, kind of coming to the grade about 30 miles an hour, and we'll do skip downs, trying to maintain speed on grades. So you'll drop three or four gears in a shift. And then you'll just get to the top and kind of motor right over. And this fleet was unique because they happened to bring their own trucks, um, their own their own drivers and their own their own actual trucks. And they had manual um, 13 or 18 speeds. 18, 18 30 year drivers. Yeah, very experienced drivers. And the first guy um, pulls his own truck up on there, and they're right around 129, I think 130, uh, close to the same weight. And he pulls on the 50% grade, trying to maintain speed, and he uh, blows his first shift comes to stop on the grade and then has to relaunch. Um, it was one of the ones that just kind of showed that, you know, this transmission can really, the way we were able to control the engine, uh, control our um, gears as quickly as it can, we could do things that a lot of manual drivers, you know, would have trouble doing. Um, it just 
Right. And we'll do it consistently and seamlessly. Not that the guy's not a good driver. Right. It's just when you add uh, you know, stress to a situation or needing to really get it, sometimes those things happen. Well, we, we could tell based off the, you know, the weight, the grade, how fast the truck's speeding up or slowing down, we could calculate very quickly exactly what gear you need to go, you know, to and how to get there. Right. Where the manual driver's got to do that all on the fly, which again, a lot of guys could do it, but we could do it every time. Yeah. Driver's got to deal with traffic. Right. Road conditions, weather, you know, everything else too. Yeah. Well, that's just a little story. About a lot of you guys just need to try and drive this transmission. Um, I had a gentleman who drives 18 speeds. He said everybody's going to make fun of him if he went, goes to this transmission. Um, and I asked him if he'd driven it. He had not. So he took one out for a drive and after he came back, he said, he said man, it's very nice, very smooth training. So that's just some of I think a lot of it is it can do a lot of things better. And take a lot of the stress out of it, especially in traffic, like we're dealing with now.